two. One's two. That's sad. How's it guys? I'm David Mason, and this is where my family and I have been spending the duration of lockdown. Let's go inside. So this is the living room where me and the family have been spending lots of quality time together. So this is the tea room, and also where we keep the piano. Over quarantine, I've been learning to play the piano. Still got quite a lot to learn. This is the kitchen where me and the family will often cook dinner and eat and maybe have a glass of wine or two. So this is the outside lounge area where we've been spending a lot of time during lockdown trying to keep ourselves entertained. And this is where we have our brides. We usually have a bride every two to three nights. All right, over here we've got a little gym set up. Thanks to Virgin Active SA and the HPC for setting us up with a bunch of weights, helping us stay fit during lockdown. And then obviously you've got a great view while you work out here in front of you. I'm very fortunate to be staying here with my family and living in one of the most beautiful places in the country. I look forward though to getting back to training at the HPC once this lockdown ends and getting back on track with the season with the Stormers boys. Basically, where we we have to align everything uh, with uh, governmental guidelines. So during level five lockdown, uh, it's a total lockdown, and we obviously were not allowed to train, not allowed to uh, work as a team environment. When level five became level four, we were allowed to um, provide essential services, and those essential services include medical uh, and physiotherapy treatments. As we are a registered medical uh, practice, we are allowed to provide uh, essential medical services only to injured athletes. So the facility has been opened up in a phased approach where only the medical rooms are being utilized and only those injured players who have long-term injuries that require management to ensure that they become fully functional are being seen at the facility. So we're working on a very, very strict uh, needs basis and only injured athletes and only treating practitioners are in the facility at any one time. Medical services are allowed to, to return that athlete back to full function. And health can be physical, it can be mental, it can be uh, emotional. We have to make sure we look after our athletes on all levels. So we are basically complying with all governmental regulations and we are only uh, moving those athletes from injured to more functional and uh, making sure they get back to be able to, when we are allowed to train, train fully. Can be strong, like slow and control. We've looked 
looked at the way the facility usually operates, which is obviously um, a chaotic environment of uh, more than a hundred individuals going about uh, training and rehabbing, etc. And we've broken that down into make sure that the facility has a one-way flow, that there's no uh, uh, there's no crossing of patients, no crossing of practitioners. We're making sure that everything is on an appointment basis so that we have very limited numbers, uh, just the treating practitioner and the injured player on, on any one time. And because of this, we make sure that there's very minimal contact and very minimal risk of spread uh, of, the, of the virus. We've had to look at what is, what is the possibility of us getting a positive case, how does it affect um, who is a contact, contact tracing, who gets um, isolated or quarantined and how those processes are followed. So they're very strict guidelines in terms of structurally what happens when we get a positive case, what happens when there may be an illness and how do we deal with it and follow all protocols to make sure that there's no transmission of the virus. So we're on our way to Marsh Memorial Homes. Um, it's, uh a home for originally for orphans um, and, and now mostly for children that are unable to live in their current homes due to abuse or to drug use or um, in many reasons. I reached out again to the home and they were in need of, of certain things, um, basically masks and sanitizers that, that I was able to source and we're on our way to go and give them, give them to Kevin who is the principal at the, at the home. Yeah, it was just a small help that we thought we could do, you know, in this dire time. I know you said last time the kids hadn't been home yet, and obviously still not, so they've missed out on the holiday. I hope they're using the, the, the soccer and the rugby balls that um, Dylan and I bought the other day. I'm just oh. glad we could, could contribute in a small way. I know it's not much, but we'll, we'll be bringing some more masks and more sanitizer. Oh. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, no, it's a great help. Uh, Chris, yeah. please, sanitizer, we feel like we're drinking it. Sure. And when you think of all the kids changing Correct. masks and, playing, and having yeah. to launder them, and that is a big sure. thing. So this is a great help to us. And then we're still going to come paint the lines eh, when we yeah, look with, when we can do that safely. To create the arena. Yeah. yeah. No, cool. All right. Well, great, wonderful. Kevin. Thanks so yeah. much, guys.